What's up, guys? It's Celtic here doing another Player's Card Vigor review after a very long time. I have done such a Player's Card review of the Player's Card Final Fantasy X Yuna. Um, just absolutely amazing figure. Absolutely love it so much. And she's one of my favorite female characters in the Final Fantasy universe. I must say, Square Enix pretty much did a great job of this female sculpting figure. It just kind of makes me adore it so much because it looks absolutely stunning. I mean, just like the amount of detail, especially on her head sculpt, it's just like, it's just jaw-dropping. It's just like, it, she looks beautiful in the video game, but she also be looks so incredibly beautiful in this figure form. Kind of sad to the point that I kind of adore this a lot more than my fiance, but uh, thankfully she's not here to hear that, but then, uh, you know, this kind of is, but again, I pay attention more to her than this actual figure, or she calls a doll, if you will. But nonetheless, absolutely fantastic figure, although there's one thing that kind of bothered me from Square Enix by releasing this figure is because it seems like a re-release of Yuna. Uh, to those who don't know, they actually, Square Enix actually has done this figure before, but not so great sculpting and pretty much little, less articulation than this one, or if not more. Um, Square Enix, from what I've seen from their videos in the past years, saying that they never plan to do re-releases because of not much demand from their player's Kai fan base, which I beg to differ because apparently I'm one of them, and I like to see re-releases of the figures that I recently released in the years before, especially, specifically the original Metal Gear Solid figure, Gray Fox, and Solid Snake. But, it just like kind of like seems hypocritical of them, you know, Saying not gonna re-release figures, but apparently Yuna and Titus or Titus, whichever you want to pronounce the name, seems to be the different story. Because apparently, again, they re-released it with more better sculpting, better articulation, even though it's supposed to be the remastered version of that game. But I still, it just like seems hypocritical, hypocritical of them to say that and just re-release this figure with better articulation. Say we're not planning to re-release other figures in the past. So that can that one thing kind of upset me the most, and I'll do a rant video about that sort of thing later on. But nonetheless, you know, it's a incredible figure. Absolutely love it. I mean, not much in terms of articulation. I mean, it's just like very little to none. I can't really say how better it is from the first release, but again, absolutely love it. I'm just as a Final Fantasy fan, I'm glad I had this in my collection. Just absolutely amazing. But before we go with that detail with this figure, let's take a quick look at the packaging. Packaging seems standard for the rest of the player's card figures. I like this little beautiful clean look of this Final Fantasy X units packaging. I mean, you got a nice beautiful figure and the poses and what happened to the scenes in the video game. Uh, she is figure number two of the line. Now for the side, we got a nice clean look of the Final Fantasy X logo, HD remaster. I still got to play that even though I love or have done it back in the PS two days on the back. We got some nice poses of the Yuna with her hands together and have a staff and so forth. A nice background of, I should say, Spira afterwards. I'm not really sure. It's been a while since I played again, so I apologize. And here in the bottom right, you can see that he's... Bottom left, I'm sorry, is figure number... Uh, right, actually. Number one, Titus. I call him Titus for whatever odd reason. And the side, you know, got the nice other Final Fantasy X logo. Sorry for the blurriness there. And for the top, you got, you know, same logo of Final Fantasy X. You got the warning attention label not to choke on small pieces. If you decide to give it to an infant, if, I don't know why would you, but and then the bottom, there is the player's card symbol. Then we look from this window box packaging, at the opening. Now, if you can see, well, there's the base that comes standard with now for player's card in the near future as well. And you get the nice cue shot of the couple, you know, just like being hand in hand or like comf Tita's comforting Yuna you know, at that one moment that she broken down into tears. And there's a small bio of that. You want to take a look at that. You want to pause it if you like to. And that's pretty much how the packaging is so far of this of this figure. So not not too bad. You know, I absolutely love how the packaging are the packaging is for these figures. But there you are. Let's go detail more on that figure. And here's a couple close look up close look of Yuna's face and just absolutely amazing and stunningly. I just love the amount of work that Square Enix put into this figure. Just absolutely amazing. Just love how they sculpted their hair and it's also this headband thingy and that was called but just like cute on her just like inside her in her hair is absolutely adorable. And I like how they sculpted their hair. You know nice solid brown paint to it and the plastic moldings here. And she has put, put some pink lipstick on her which is really nice though but I really don't like is that you know she has a sort of a 
somewhat mouth opening on her face. Kind of seems odd for her in this figure. As I zoom in up close, get more detail on her eyes. I don't know if I can't pick it up, but it seems like, you know, her eyes, one of them is green, one of them is blue, but, you know, gotta love the detail that Square Enix put. And also a little makeup and eyelashes you can see in your eye. Again, I apologize if my camera don't pick that up, but it's there. And, you know, once you have the figure in hand and up close in person, and you can see, like, a necklace around Yuna. Not too much detail, but, you know, some silver painting and things like some black or not dark blue inside the necklace is very nicely detailed. Love how they actually sculpt the lines under the top and right there. Then you can see some part of her bra, and it seems like she was wearing a black bra. It didn't seem noticeable in the game, but whatever. And from the back of the figure, you see nice detail of the flowers and so forth under the bow right there. Very nice. Seems pretty basic design, you know, of her coloring of this or a detail of this figure. I mean, not much expected, but you know, it's just a little things that counts, and you know, more on that ribbon or large bow that she wears. Nicely sculpted detail, and yes, there's some lines sculpted in this plastic, as well as in the middle of this round blue thing, but it's just amazing. And you know, got some nice, at least um, made out of small, like soft plastic, but yet yeah, you want to be careful with this because you don't want to pull it too much or anything like that, otherwise, they will rip off, and you know, you don't want that to happen. But you know, got some nice detail there. I uh, guess in her one of her hands, the standards that are fisted, you know, got the nice ring, so ring there with silver paint on it. And on her left or right, got her staff hand to hold the staff, and she got a nice bracelet on her wrist, and another ring there. You know, not much painted detail other than white or silver. And you can see like the skirt, you know, just very nice detail, like how the flower design from well. The whole skirt from the back too, just absolutely amazing. Well, not the back, not so much detail. It's kind of a little disappointing. Since it's all plain purple, but you know those sky, the line sculpted within just show some you know fabric movement there, or show how fabric movement. But it's also made of soft plastic too, so that way it doesn't hinder your articulation that much. But even so, the articulation isn't that great, which I'll go into detail later. And you got some nice silver, like you know, not silver, uh, purple wash with this, you know cloth on her arms there and more of it but a deeper color up and see this position there not too bad pretty good just love how square Enix, you know does some brushing or the wash the paint a different colors so with the her top there and I see there's some blue wash mesh with this white top too that's what I love it the one thing I didn't like much is their skin tone it kind of seems different from throughout the figure like one part looks pale and the other one looks kind of a pinkish hue to it you can see like her arms right here it doesn't seem pink in the camera but it seems kind of a beige but up close person it kind of seems more of a dark beige if not peach sort of color to her arms but you know just like not too bad but kind of wish they'd done a better job with that then i go to her boots not much detail pretty simplistic and you know up to her ankles so forth don't go underneath it because i'm not that perverted and see you know Again, okay, just pretty plain. Not much detail. It's just so basic boots, which is kind of odd for a woman like you know wear some plain boots. But yes, she has very detailed taste from her top and from her skirt, which is kind of seems again odd though. But yeah, yeah, that's it for the figure. And she does come with accessories. She doesn't come with that much accessories, but aside from the staff, which is really nice and detailed, she does come with interchangeable face with her eyes closed, which absolutely looking, looks very cute and angelic. Love that a lot. You know. Not much in detail, but yeah, you can see, well, get my camera to focus a little more better. I'm not too sure. I'll just get to zoom it up close. Just like try to get a better look at this one. But uh, yeah, there we go. I mean, if my parents doesn't pick it up, I apologize. But yeah, she got some eyelashes, you know, individually sculpted with her face. Pretty much fantastic. Love the amount of work they do with it. And also comes soft or relaxed hands for, you know, there's not much detail as well. You know, still continue with the bracelet for one of them. Also got this ring on her pinky as well. Not much detail, but it is what it is. And for the other arm, just relaxed hands, not much. But apparently from the other different hands set standard with that figure, it's just like it seems very pale. I mean, like, again, just like the pain seems like, you know, 
odd for her, you know, because apparently, you know, parts of her look like a bit pinkish or if not like some sort of different skin tone compared to all throughout the body, but especially her hands, one looks very pale throughout the figure. This doesn't seem to fit well, but, you know, I mean, just it is what it is. I mean, just don't mind it, but still, I mean, some could use like a better paint for a skin tone would be a lot better. But her staff is very nicely detailed and absolutely the sculpt is amazing as well. I mean, very clean paint on the gold on the top of the staff. There's some blue to it. It's absolutely amazing. Pretty bland staff, but not much detail. But the paintwork is, again, very clean. I just absolutely love how Square Enix does it. Just absolutely amazing. I mean, loved it. And also, the end, bottom end of the staff, you know, is kind of soft plastic. And again, must be careful. So that way it doesn't get ripped. Because, again, you don't want that to happen. And I doubt that Supergirl actually will fix that issue. But, you know, good amount of accessories for you. I mean, she's not much. She's just only a summoner. That's all. Changing interchangeable faces is really not that typical. It was like ridiculously easy. All I could do is like pull this part out. And then her face is right there with this little slot there. Very thick slot so that way it stays well. Kind of like how Square Enix does it. All I got to do is put that face in. Get a nice tug inside. Then put her hair back. And then there she is being all Sleeping Beauty. But then again, that's how she put her face as, you know... She's about to, you know, concentrating on summoning this. Oh my god, I forgot what they're called, but you know what I mean. But summon the spirits or the beasts that, you know, help us throughout the battle of the game. But it's just like, you know, looking very cute. Love that a lot. So I'm just going to change that because I prefer to display her standard face that come with it. Not much of an issue to change the face. So kind of glad they're easy to change, unlike compared to the other figures in the player's Kai line. For the articulation for Yuna, it's really not so great. I mean, it's okay, but, you know, it's pretty much understandable, especially for a character like Yuna. She's a summoner. Um, her head doesn't go up that much. She go that far off. Not pretty bad, but decent and so forth. She does look down a good amount. She does have a head pivot, just a slight, because her hair has kind of, you know, hindered the articulation. Not much of a neck joint. Plan, but her arms go out that much. She has double... She has double joint elbows, but it goes 9 degrees because of the, again, how sculpted like, these arms, sleeves here kind of hindered the articulation. Also, her, her arms will take 360 degrees, and then and it goes in and out with butterfly effect, but mine's a bit stiff, so I don't want to put too much pressure nor loosen it. And she does have her hands rotate and goes in and out. Uh, she doesn't have much of a diaphragm joint, just, well, but she does have... Oh, actually, she does. I'm a little surprised there. I did not notice that. But yeah, diaphragm joint could dealt ab crunch there. Pull her back that much. Has a waist joint and does have actually pivot also on top of the diaphragm and it's also on the waist. Actually, go her down that much. And I'm back. Oh, well, she can bend that way back. Well, no reason why she should. Um, her legs is pretty not much because again, the skirt kind of hindered articulation, but it's made out of plastic. But still. Legs could go part that far out again due to her skirt, and she can push her foot that far out as well as that far back. Yeah, she does have double joint elbows, kind of had the ugly knee joints, but you know, she doesn't really need to bend her legs though. But yeah, there's how it is, and thankfully, the skirt is hiding that ugly knee joint since I wish Square Enix did a better job at that, but nonetheless. Her feet goes up and down, and it goes from side to side, and she does have a nice ankle pivot, which is really nice. Again, articulation is not that great, but, you know, it is how it should be. I mean, like, she doesn't do much in terms of action or poses, but just basic summoning poses is pretty much enough for me as it is. So, I yeah, we'll just get her to stand up. There we go. And, yeah, I mean, she's an absolutely figure. Absolutely love it. I mean, just, I like, cannot recommend this figure. I mean, if you love, you know, or especially the Final Fantasy X characters, by all means, get it. I mean, she's absolutely amazing from head to toe. Beautiful sculpt, especially on her face. She looks absolutely cute. And the amount of detail, very, you know, is very little and ain't much, but still, it's just amazing how this re-release of Yuna kind of came out Altogether, just like I highly recommend it again, especially if you love the Final Fantasy series. 
But so that is my review of Final Fantasy X Yuna from Player Sky. If you'd like to see more reviews, please hit the subscribe button. And if you like, please rate and comment. Um, Till next time, guys. See ya.